We I'll have Carl Aragel with us here, head coach of Newman Garetti. Welcome back to the Palestra. It's become an annual affair for you guys. Is it still special coming back every single year? Oh, sure. Every time you get to play in here, the atmosphere is great. It's just all the tradition. Yeah, it's you know it's great for the kids. It's a great experience. Something I'll never forget. And this team, it's a little bit of a different version of Newman Gretti. You guys have battled through the injury to Kafik Myers. Amir Williams have been battling back from injury, and yet this team continues to win a two seed, tough win against Archbishop Carroll. How has this specific group done it this year? Uh, they've, they've achieved a lot so far. I mean, we're still not whole. We won't be whole, actually, for, you know, with feet, but um, guys are just battling for a lot of nagging stuff, and nobody, you know, nobody's going to feel sorry for us. I mean, nobody's 100% like at this time of year, but, you know, it's been a young group, a lot of different guys, and, you know, just to see them step up and answer the bell, it's been pretty good for them to get here. This game against Archbishop Bryan, game one this season, was one of the best games that the league saw. Big shot by Torrey Brooks, won the game. What will it take to beat Archbishop Bryan this second time around? We'll have to be better than we were that night. Um, defensively, we, when I watched it back, we, we, were, we were more lucky than good. You know, they, they missed a lot of shots. Um, so we're gonna have to be a little bit better in that area. And uh, hopefully we're making shots, you know, but it's really, you know, a lot of it's going to depend on, you know, how things go early with the, with the whistles and stuff. I mean, Thomas is a big physical guy, and uh, we got to do our best to try to contain him without fouling. You know, we can't get in foul trouble, and if we do, then, you know, we got a lot of foul trouble in that first game, and we're able to kind of, you know, we won and lost that game about four different times. So, I mean, it's, so anything can happen tonight. Thank you for doing this. Thanks for always being so gracious and best of luck. Bob, Bob. Right. Carl Aragel, guys, back to you. Yeah, absolutely. Great words right there from head coach Carl Aragel, one of the best minds in the Philadelphia Catholic League. Danny, we're down here in oh. front of the Archbishop Ryan bench with head coach Joe Zaglinski. Joe, congratulations. What an emotional win against St. Joe's Prep to get to the Palestra. How did you guys do it on Friday? Yeah, I thought we were connected, you know, for 32. They made some runs, and we responded every time. That's what we're going to have to do tonight. So, you know, we're excited, and we're ready. Darren Williams, Thomas Sorber, they've led the way. 39 of the 49 points you scored in that win. What will you need from both of those guys tonight? They have to continue to do what they've been doing, you know, and other guys are going to have to step up. You know, you know I think we're playing a great uh, brand of team basketball. We have to get back to our defense set and uh, stop their transition points and uh, control the pace. Joe, thanks for doing it. Thanks. Ted, Danny? Thanks, Bob. And, you know, you know, Coach talked about connecting, and he talked about other guys stepping up. One of the players that you're going to see for Archbishop Ryan is Jaden Murray, a third-team All-Catholic. You have Thomas Sorber, co-MVP, first-team All-Catholic, and you have uh, Darren Williams, who is also a first-team All-Catholic. But uh, Jaden Murray is the kind of – he's a 6'6 forward. Comes in off the dunk spot a lot. Um, good defense. Gets his hands on some balls to flex. Um, if you can look for him. You're going to see number five, Ryan Everett, maybe come off the bench and give them a spark. I'm not sure who Coach Stinsky has starting tonight, but he certainly has come on in this last part of the year with some timely threes and some good defense. What do you got for, for Newman Garetti? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a, uh, a night, I think, of Showtime Tory Brooks. Uh, I mean, he is such a, uh, an amazing player, uh, does a great job scoring at a high clip. Um, I'm, really I'm a really big fan of how this, uh, this, this Newman offense runs. I mean, they are just so skilled. I'm sorry about that. So skilled here with playing from the perimeter, moving the ball around great. I mean, like, we, like uh, you know, Zaglinski said, it, it's really important to stop their transition points. We know that Newman has a tendency to uh, play a fast brand of basketball, so I think we're going to see a lot of scoring tonight, Ted. Jerkins, Brooks, Ashley Wright, it's gonna be, that's going to be their triumvirate of, of, of point scorers tonight. Um, but this is a really good chance for, for these young players, these young Newman Garetti players, to get really good experience in and get into a final. Yeah, absolutely. Another name I'd like to highlight too, Matt Gokas, a uh, great forward for Newman Garetti. Uh, look to see him in this matchup as well. I mean, he is also a very highly skilled player. He was literally draped all over Sorber in that second half. Yep. Uh, 
back at Newman Garetti in that victory for uh, the Knights in, in overtime earlier this year. It, that's going to be an interesting matchup because you watch how they handle Sorber. Sorber is 6'9", 6'10", maybe. He can play in and out a little bit. He's, he's developed a jump shot, mid-range jumper. Can even take it a little bit farther back. But there was not a there was not a time when he wasn't grabbed, touched, pulled, hit, everything. And I think that's how they have to play him. Um, because I think what you're going to see is uh, the same way that Jackson took care, you know, the inability for them to, to take care of Jackson. Uh, Sorber's going to a Sorber win is going to have to be, uh, for the Ryan to win, Sorber's going to have to do that for Ryan. We want to thank our sponsors here tonight. Before we get started, Blocks. At Blocks, we help you turn your Pennsylvania state tax liability into need-based scholarships. For your school, as an addition, you're going to receive a 90% tax credit refund. So that's Blocks. You can learn more at blocks.org slash tax credit. Thanks also to Petrosky Physio, the leader in sports physical therapy for high school, college, and professional athletes. Everybody doing all right there? All good, Bobby, all good. Looks like we need some Petrosky Physio. <laughs> Might need some physical therapy on that one there. The leader in sports physical therapy for high school, college, and professional athletes in Philadelphia. Check them out at PetroskyPhysio.com or follow them on Instagram at Petrosky Physio. And then finally, Primo Hoagies. Fans, big games mean big parties. Don't settle for an average catering tray. Make it a Primo. Order at one of the Primo Hoagies locations in store or online at primoshoagies.com. I'm feeling like a sharp Italian tonight, Bob. I can tell you that. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Bob Long, Danny Rovey, Ted Westervelt here with Alex Shevchuk on the camera what a night of philadelphia high school boys basketball let's get it underway here in game number two newman Beretti, archbishop ryan the number five seed archbishop ryan raiders and the number two seed newman Beretti saints dan hoban is the public address announcer here tonight does a great job every single year here at the Palestra. Told me pregame that Roman Catholic has played the most games in this building of any Philadelphia Catholic League team, right behind Newman Garetti, who will play tonight, dressed in the white uniforms, looking to advance to yet another Catholic League final, and a team under Carl Aragale that has won 12 Philadelphia Catholic League titles. 12. Since Aragale took over. That's unbelievable. A great look at the wide shot here that is the Palestra. There is not a seat to be had right now. There wasn't a seat to be had in the final moments of that Father Judge Roman Catholic game. And the corners. Corners are filled. That's when you know it's a big game here at the Palestra. Now pause for the prayer.
A beautiful rendition yet again, capped by 9,500 strong, belting at full volume, ready for game number two of the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal. Here from the Palestra, the Cathedral of College Basketball. Dim the lights, let's get it underway. We will meet the five seed from Northeast Philadelphia, the Archbishop Ryan Raiders. Matt Johnson, a guard, the sophomore, will start. Darren Williams scored 22 points, including the game's winning bucket in a quarterfinal matchup just down the street at 17th and Girard against St. Joseph's Prep. Rocco Morabito, number three, introduced next, a guard that they're gonna need him or someone else to be that third scoring option, Jaden Murray. He could fit that mix as well. And then of course, the big man, the co-MVP of the Philadelphia Catholic League, scored 17 in a quarterfinal matchup against St. Joe's Brett, Thomas Sorber. I mean, what an atmosphere, guys. I mean, having the cheerleaders on the court like this is just so electric. Newman Garetti now introduced. They will be the home team. They will wear the white uniforms. And they will start a lineup that has been in flux over the course of the year. Amir Williams introduced right now. He's been battling injury, suffered a stinger in a game against Car uh, Conwell Egan earlier in the season. He is back, maybe not quite 100%, but ready to go and knock down the quarter jumper. Lorenzo Jerkins was introduced first, and then the three guards. Tory Brooks, Deshaun Yates, and Stefan Ashley Wright. You will all remember Stefan Ashley Wright, who was a big part of the Newman Garetti runner-up finish last year in both the Catholic League Championship and the PIAA State Championship with the 4A level. The half-brother of Rob Wright, who is no longer with the program. Went to go play at Monteverde Academy and is pursuing basketball at the next level there. Here we go. Game number two. Archbishop Ryan late to break that huddle. Ted, they're going to wear the black uniforms here today. They've been road warriors all year long. This is a neutral site game, but... Maybe with Newman Garetti playing this as a second home venue, maybe it feels like a road right. environment tonight. Well, I'll tell you, I, I do know this. I, I, I know that uh, this senior class is ready for Archbishop Ryan, and, and Coach Aragale told you about his youth. I think that's the biggest thing right now tonight. Doesn't matter where they play. They could play out at Mitchell Playground in the Northeast or play at the Palestra. We're gonna have a young group versus, versus an old group, a group that had an older group that has very high expectations. Um, so I think that's where this game is going to lie. Danny, one key for you. Oh, I think that this offense for Archbishop Ryan is completely ran through Thomas Sorber. It's going to be really interesting to see his matchup with number 21 there, Lorenzo Jenkins, the forward. Lorenzo Jerkins has been a tremendous player for Newman Garetti. We'll get into his story as the game goes along, playing in his senior season, but just his third year of high school basketball. Archbishop Ryan, after winning the tip, gets into the half-court set. High-low action, they love it. Getting it inside to Thomas Sorber, good find by Jaden Murray. Just like you saw in game one, get it to the big guy. Stefan Ashley Wright pulls Sorber out far from the basket. Lorenzo Jerkins couldn't hit it from the elbow. But that will be a soft spot against this Archbishop Ryan zone. Newman Garetti will have to be proficient from the mid-range. One of the final two is set. It's Roman Catholic. Thomas Sorber has the first four for Archbishop Bryan. You can see him smiling right there, running back on playing defense. I mean, he is just so amped up to start this one off. Open three in the corner. That barely drew the iron, and Rocco Morabito on one hop brings it down. The red... Student section here for Archbishop Bryan. That's what Newman Gretti has to shoot into here in the first half. We'll see if they can part the Red Sea, Bob. Uh-huh. Darren Williams got to a good spot. Couldn't hit it. Brought down by Tory Brooks. Ashley Wright. Good cut inside. Wild shot, though, won't go. Tried to attack the body of Thomas Sorber. And that's where I think Sorber has an intimidation factor. You saw it right there. He averages five blocks a game. Jaden Murray. They'll reset. Good back cut. 
Strong catch. Murray for three. Archbishop Ryan. That's the trademark offense. Back cuts. Strong extra pass. Get those feet set. Jaden Murray. Yeah, Archbishop Ryan running their offense to a tee right there. And maybe a quick hoist for Lorenzo Jerkins. It is a younger Newman Garetti team. Kafik Myers, we talked about it in the pregame interview with Carl Aragel. Had a knee injury that will keep him out for the rest of the season. However, that long nut goes for Newman Garetti. And so they have had to piece things together. Not the most experienced Saints team. Maybe a little frazzled in the opening minutes. You talk about composure. I, I don't think Jerkins is a 25% free uh, three-point shooter, and he takes that three. Wow, that foul is called against Lorenzo Jerkins. Carl Aragale doesn't like that call. You, saw, you heard that comment, Ted, pregame, talking about what type of whistle they're going to get. Carl Aragale is not new to the block. <laughs> <laughs> no, he is not. That is a tough call. If it was football, they would have waved off the pass interference because the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Darren Williams. Jaden Murray on the offensive rebound. It's a quick 9-0 spurt. Can you believe this? Lots of game to go. Lots of game to go. But I will tell you that I was surprised that they didn't go right at Jerkins that next trip down. Count it wow. and one for Stefan Ashley Wright. A big man move when they needed it. Get another look. They wanted ISO clearing it out, overloading on the weak side of the floor so that it's just Morabito there to guard Stefan Ashley Wright. Who did they get the foul on? Morabito. His first, team's first. But, Ted, we talked about the key here for this one for Archbishop Ryan. How do you get a third score? Because great that Darren Williams scored 22 and Sorber 17. Certainly Williams feels like the key, but can you get a third scorer? Already five points for Jaden Murray out of the starting lineup. Sure. They've been sharing that responsibility through the years. It hasn't been where they wanted it as a team. But uh, you'll see Murray, and then you may see Ryan Everett come in off the bench and be that guy along with Brandon Russell. And if they can get eight and eight. Great hands there by Newman Garetti. First to it, though, is Jaden Murray. And the lane opens up. You talk about parting the Red Sea. Just couldn't knock it down. Good aggressive drive, though. And Rocco Morabito has picked up his second personal foul in less than four minutes of play. That's a great job by Stefan Ashley Wright attacking that outer hip. The Knights just seem to just always come up with playmakers and guards all the time. No doubt about that. And it is Ashley Wright with the keys to the car. Amir Williams. That's going to be an important piece for Newman Garetti to be able to spread the floor with Thomas Sorber as the shot blocker inside. Yeah. Traditionally, he shot it in the high 30s, Danny, from beyond the arc. Yeah, definitely a nice look, though, from uh, Amir Williams. Just couldn't fall on that one, but a great look for Newman. Matt Johnson. He came into the starting lineup when Father Judge picked up three early Philadelphia Catholic League regular season losses. Went into the starting lineup the night of the Father Judge game, and Archbishop Ryan has not lost since. On the contrary, that's a low-quality look right there from Muir Williams. Kind of rushed that possession right there, firing off a shot that was nowhere close. Eleven three with three forty-six to play. Sorber. Good skip pass for Ryan Everett. Got those feet set and knocked it down. Time out, Newman Garetti. And that was what Joe Zaglinski talked about in your pregame interviews. People need to step up. Johnson, Everett right there, and Murray. Yeah, off the dime right there from Sorber in the corner. Everett just cannot miss. We talk about it all the time here in the Philadelphia Catholic League. These big men, they come up learning how to pass. Willing passers out of the high post. And let's take a look at some of our sponsors here today. Thanks to Petrosky Physio for being with us here tonight. Let's tell you a little bit about Petrosky Physio, the leader in sports physical therapy for high school, college, and professional athletes in Philadelphia. Check them out at PetroskyPhysio.com or follow them on Instagram. 
at Petrosky Physio. Primo Hoagies. Fans, big games mean big parties. Don't settle for an average catering tray. Make it a Primo. Order one at one of their Primo Hoagies location in store or online at primohoagies.com. And finally, Blocks, the title sponsor of the whole three day bonanza here. Last night for the girls' semis, tonight for the boys' semis, and then the two se uh, championship matches on Monday night. At Blocks, we can help you turn your PA state tax liability into need based scholarships for your school. And for doing so, you'll receive a 90% tax credit refund. Learn more at blocks.org slash tax credit. What does Carl Aragale tell that, tell that group in that huddle, Danny? I think just to knock it in their own heads. I mean, you're down you know, 11 points, and, and you're, you're well over halfway through the first quarter, but I think that it's really important that this Newman team see as composed as possible right here. That's not really the shot that they're looking for, however. She had Tory Brooks right there, fire one off, kind of like a step back motion. Not a and high quality Ryan look. Ryan throws it away though. And we talked about youth and seniors. That's the sophomore guard make, maybe making that mistake right there. The yeah, only, think, the only sophomore on the floor for the Raiders. Yeah, you know, I, I really think it's important on Newman's side as well to, to really not rush their, their possessions. They've had a lot of possessions where they just kind of fired off shots, it seems like, on a win. It's really important to let these plays develop and, and play to the Aragel system. Nearly a giveaway, Jerkins now. He's pulled Sorber out, and he's gonna go right at him. Good finish. Jerkins plays off two feet, gets into the lane. Yeah, fearless play from Jerkins right there, taking on Sorber one-on-one. -on -one. I'm sure he's had that matchup on the bulletin board for a long time, guys. Yeah. Picture in the locker, right, Dan? Absolutely. Darren Williams, so good with the left hand, creates space, but couldn't finish with the right. Tory Brooks hit the game winner in this regular season matchup between the two teams. He has been forced to step up in a big way with the injury to first team all Catholic, Kafik Myers. Jerkins knocked it down. And Danny, you see the difference between the first turn and hoist versus you get yourself a paint touch, kick out, step into it, it makes all the difference. Well, that's exactly what I was saying in my previous point about the Aragel system right there. They need to let these plays develop right there and they can have great scoring opportunities just like we saw. Good back cut by Jaden Murray. He was patient in the lane and able to put it up with that strong right hand. Murray with seven in the first quarter. Keon Long off the window. Thomas Sorber jumped and a great job by Jerkins. He went for the shot block. Jerkins on the weak side. And that's seven for Jerkins. Sorber now from the high post, sets the ball screen, and Williams gets a great look. Ryan Everett got two hands on it, couldn't bring it in. And this is where they're dangerous. Stefan Ashley Wright will shoot two. Ashley Wright almost with a highlight play right there. You can see him pacing down the court. I mean, tremendous acceleration to get to the basket right there. Fouled in the act shooting. And just like that, that lead gets cut down to six. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Newman Garetti starting to find their footing a little bit on both sides of the floor. Ashley Wright is a 74% foul shooter, and you really can't tell the story of Newman Garetti, certainly not in the last few years, without talking about the struggles from the foul line. This is a Newman Garetti team that would be reigning Philadelphia Catholic League champs, potentially even reigning state champs. If they could be more proficient from the line, certainly in that Catholic League title game, leading by six in the final 45 seconds, Roman Catholic ended up winning that game because of six straight misses from the yeah. line for the Saints. And in the last game against this matchup, they went 50% from the line. Knocked both of those down. It's down to a four-point deficit. So Newman Garetti has taken the gut punch. Here is Russell into the game for the first time. He gave it away. Good active hands, and that lane opens up. Keon Long couldn't hit it. Ashley Wright will settle things down. They're not a team necessarily to slow things down, and they're sure not going to do that there. Thomas Sorber pulls it down with 47 seconds left. And let's see what Joe Zaglinski dials up here in this last 45 seconds.
I think you have to be happy where you're at. If you can get a great look, Ooh. that's the challenge there. Travel yeah. with the basketball. Yeah, getting nicked on something like that is never something you can afford as a Raider. And that might be one of those reasons, Ted, why earlier in the year, Matt Johnson got a little bit more playing time. An yeah. excellent ball handler. Sometimes when you have two key scorers like that and a great front court, you need one more ball handler, not another wing. You're absolutely right, Pat. Absolutely right. In this case, it was, you're worried, not worried, but this is uh, the transfer, Russell. His, this is a big moment for him. This is a little bit different than Pennington Prep, is where he transferred from. We know that Father Judge is out. We know that Archbishop Ryan and Newman Goretti will continue their seasons regardless of the outcome of this one. But these teams looking to win a Catholic League title. Good straight line drive, Thomas Sorber. And they do not get it off in time. What Darren rejection. Williams was late. But let's get another look at Thomas Sorber take it off his hands. A five-star block from a five-star player, guys. Really no other way to put it. <laughs> Absolutely. Hello. Allen Iverson, Ty Lu, anybody? Block <laughs> to the floor. And Alex Shevchuk stayed on this shot. I'm glad he did. Wow. Wow. Making a statement right there as the first quarter closes. With an official looking right on. My goodness. And turns away with nary a whistle. We head to the second quarter. Ted, I want to talk about our two friends at the restaurants. You can't go to both, so there's no competition here. Let's start by talking about Keenan's because you know what? This weekend looks really darn good for heading down to the beach. Well, know, first of all, th thank you to Keenan's for the sponsorship. Their two owners are Newman grads from the 80s, and like we've been saying all night, it's the Biggest corner bar down the shore. Uh -huh. um, great music and entertainment. Go down and see uh, Bobby DiBenedetto down there. Um, they have a big announcement tomorrow. You'll follow them on their social media pages. And it has something to do with Motown and some entertainment. And oh, I know man. you're, you're. are you a Four Tops guy or a Teps guy, Bob? Say that one more time. Are you a Four Tops? Are you a Four Tops guy or a Temptations guy? You man, <laughs> I don't know. You I think look like a you look like a four tops guy. You're, to you're dating me, I think. <laughs> I don't know. And then Maggie's Waterfront <laughs> in Northeast Philadelphia also sponsoring us. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for for that. If you get a chance, um, right right near Linden Avenue in Frankfurt, go check them out at Maggie'sWaterfront.com. It happens. Not the last you'll hear from those wonderful sponsors. They are the reason why we're doing this broadcast here tonight. Step back for Torrey Brooks, very similar to the shot he hit in South Philadelphia to beat Archbishop Ryan several weeks ago. So guys, you starting to feel the same way, like this is having the same feel as the first game except for this turnover right here. Great look, playing off two feet, Stefan Ashley Wright. Well, it feels like we're setting, settling into a rhythm, Ted, more so than anything else. Newman Garetti took the gut punch, and then they're home away from home, the Palestra. They've started to figure it out. Can Archbishop Bryan now throw the next punch? Jaden Murray, good active hands by Newman Garetti, and they coerce yet another steal. Russell got it back, and that is going to be waved off. That's a great call by that official, and we're going to get a 50% speed look at home. Yeah, absolutely. The right call to make right there. You can see that ball still around the rim, just too close to call. You're going to have to, to yep. get Ryan on that. No doubt about it. Still on the rim. Hey, listen, you're down 11. I mean, I think they really, they really got comfortable with their game plan. And now shots are starting to fall. We got three turnovers in the last four possessions, and now a foul on Thomas Sorter. His first. Archbishop Ryan's first here in the second quarter. Jerkins one on one. That means they pull Sorber out when Archbishop Ryan's in the man to man. Well, Jerkins close to the baseline right wow. there. And I'll tell you what, he attacked that outside hip. I, I think he's tied up on the baseline there but he was trying to get Thomas Sorber's second personal foul. And that's what I would do if I was them. I think that was a smart, that's a smart go-to there. And there was a little bit of a lower body shove, I but I, I, yeah. I think the official gave Sorber the benefit of the doubt, 
because where's Jerkins going there? There's nowhere to go along the baseline. Sorber couldn't hit it. And I know he can hit that, Ted, but I think Newman Gretti will live with that versus the looks in the lane. All day. Again, Sorber, they went right into that body. Did Stefan Ashley right. Dribble drive. They're going to wave off the shot. And I don't know. Tough to describe that not being in the gather to go up. Archbishop Ryan doesn't like the call at all. Did they give that to Murray? They did. Six oh seven to play. Newman Goretti in white. Archbishop Ryan in black. We know that Roman Catholic will play in the final on Monday night. Stefan Ashley Wright got his own rebound, count it, and one. That's foul number two against the co-MVP of the league, Thomas Sorber. Yeah, I mean, Ashley right, like, right there, just a, a fearless play, really not showing any signs of giving up. Obviously getting the own rebound is huge, and then drawing the foul against Thomas Sorber is something I'm sure is in the game plan for Newman Grady. They can get him into foul trouble. Who knows what can happen here for the remainder of this game. And a missed free throw for Newman Goretti keeps us tied at 16. Ashley Wright with nine. It's been the most competitive Philadelphia Catholic League regular season, the deepest league that I can remember. You got a five seed and a two seed going at it, and Thomas Sorber scores the bucket. Lorenzo Jerkins took an elbow to the face at the college level. We're reviewing that at the scorer's table and it's probably a flagrant one. Back to live action. Sorber plays on with the two personal fouls. Jerkins throws it down. Great look. Remember that one though, Danny. That is yep. a big, big no call in this game that keeps Sorber on the floor. Oh, and that's something I think is gonna really fire up Newman and Jerkins. They know what's at stake in this matchup, but if they can't get a call like that, they're gonna be really fired up to play hard. Great job by Jerkins, last touch by Jerkins. But that's how you have to fight in that high post. And yep. maybe to switch the basketball on Archbishop Ryan's side, Danny, may have been the way to create Thomas Sorber being open. Maybe you're always one pass away from being open in the post. Last three and a half minutes, the defensive energy for the Knights has been unbelievable. Sorber. And Murray lost the basketball. Six. Got it back. Everett for three. Not that time, and Sorber touched it last. So it seems like the tide is shifting a little bit, guys. Momentum is swinging in the way of the Saints now. I mean, taking advantage of some key Ryan mishaps and starting to get a little bit better into the flow of their offense. It's not a bad look for Ryan Everett there, who was able to step in the three. But you're looking at a 22% three-point shooter. He hit the one earlier today, Ted. Tough shot for Brooks. Lorenzo Jerkins is here to play. And maybe that elbow to the face really awakened a different side of Jerkins here. He has been going off since that moment. Well, and he was on this bench last year for Newman Goretti, unable to play due to a ruling in the offseason related to his transfer to Newman Goretti. And that foul is not called either on the initial blow through. We'll get another look at Sorber here, trying to get in. And again, you can be the judge at home. Did he lower that shoulder? Ooh, a lot of contact on that contact. play there. He got bailed out too. And yeah. then he got bailed out on the back end. Again, here's the entry into the post. He's good there. It's going to be this last dribble here. And does yeah, he right lower there. that shoulder? He sure does. Yeah, you can really see that. You can really, really see that. Now listen, Ted, I think a lot of Archbishop Ryan fans out there would say Thomas Sorber has not gotten a friendly whistle all year long. Yeah, you would be exactly 110% correct. So perhaps it all comes out in the wash here at the Palestra. He gets hacked all day long. He's the biggest, strongest guy on the floor every time he comes out to play. And it's the old Shaquille O'Neal right. well, we mechanism about where when it's a guard-dominated league like this, that's that's what you, that's how you have to defend that. The phone lights ablaze here in the new Gretti <laughs> student <laughs> section. This is hilarious, guys. <laughs> Great look at that from Alex Shevchuk. Mm. 
One point game, just the way we expected this one to be. Lorenzo Jerkins is blocked, able to get his own rebound, but now Sorber's out of position. And they get a really good look at it. Keon Long goes over the back. Second team foul here in the quarter against Newman Garetti. Did you see that pass? Ridiculous. <laughs> that was, that was an amazing kick out right there. To hit that jerkin story one more time, a transfer from Chester High School played a couple of years ago, Ted, believe it or not, against Archbishop Ryan in a state quarterfinal and then had a family situation change where he had no more, was not living in Chester any longer, moved to Philadelphia, had the option of going to, say, an MLK or a public league school or to play in the Catholic League, elected to play for Newman Garetti, and then before last year was deemed ineligible for the entirety of the season, lost his junior season. He has been waiting for this moment. By all accounts, just a wonderful young man who's diving on the floor for the basketball. Everybody's on the floor, and Joe Zaglinski gets the timeout. Yeah, a smart timeout call by Zaglinski right there. Gets a chance to reset right here with a little bit over three minutes to go in the half. Is there anything better than watching those kids go to get after it like that? Oh, man, it's such a pleasure to see. A lot of talent here tonight, folks. Darren Williams will play his basketball at Florida Gulf Coast for Pat Chambers, former Penn State head coach, Boston University head coach, and Villanova assistant. Now actually coaching with none other than our good buddy, Matt Griffin down there at Florida Gulf Coast. So they are recruiting Philadelphia hard, and rightly so. Ramir Barno is playing One of down your favorite there. players I know. I oh, know. my goodness. I One know. of the <laughs> quickest guards I've ever seen. Played for Imhotep for the last four years. Of course, Thomas Sorber playing his basketball at Georgetown next year. And for the Newman Garetti Saints, Lorenzo Jerkins will play at Westchester. Westchester yes. That's a great get for Westchester, man. A absolutely. Oh, 100%. That is a great get. Hofstra will welcome Amir Williams next year. Of course, some great former coaches at Hofstra between Jay Wright yep. and Joe Mahalik, a couple of our favorites there here in go. the Philadelphia Catholic League. Great look inside. Sorber goes up to get it. Everett, he'll try it again. He's two for three. How about Sorber going over the top of Deshaun Yates to grab that ball, kick it out again. That's a great play on all fronts from the entire Archbishop Bryan offense. A 50-50 ball, Danny. I'll take my chances with Thomas Sorber going up for it. <laughs> Keon Long loves to go to his left hand. And with 2.30 to go, Ryan has a two-point lead. Jerkins, he goes right at Sorber, and that is foul number three. It's a late whistle, but the foul called nonetheless. And it's a big one. Decision time for Coach Zaglinski. And with every foul call, it seems like this game just begins to change a little bit more. That one in particular. That one in particular. And Sorber is displeased. And you can hear the murmurs in the crowd. Yep. Uh-huh. Well, they need a third option. They might need a fourth option for a little while here as Sorber will go to the bench. Rocco Morabito at the scorer's table. And Ted, I noticed in the quarterfinal that Morabito saw a little less time than he normally had in regular season play, sat a decent portion of the first half, but now thrust into big minutes. You never know, you gotta stay ready, and, and Rocco's a good kid, and I know he is. Tie game, 22 apiece. But the bigger storyline is Thomas Sorber in foul trouble with the three personal fouls. Back cut for Darren Williams, it's gotta be his time, blocked, and that is Newman Coretti basketball. Jerkins has been everywhere here tonight. He's got 13. That's unbelievable. Determined to be the most impactful big on the floor here tonight. With plays like that, he certainly is. Now back oh, to wow. live action as Stefan Ashley Wright got to the hoop. I believe that was Tory Brooks there getting to the hoop, number five. That's right, the light gold on white uniforms. <laughs> yeah. Always tough to see, especially from our angle. <laughs> Good hands. We know that that's Tory Brooks going one on one to the hoop. Regained wow. possession and knocked it in. Showtime, Tory. Another key layup there for the Saints. Up four here. With around a minute and a half to go in this half. 
Okay, so this is how that first game went. Father Judge took an early lead against Roman Catholic. Roman Catholic owned the second quarter. This time it's Archbishop Ryan, the team from the Northeast, with the early gut punch. Newman Goretti coming back. Good luck for Jaden Murray, but it's pulled away. Big block by Amir Williams. And Rocco Morabito, that's his third personal foul as well. We talked about, you see this, managing the end of a quarter. Composure. Newman Garrett, Newman Garrett, has it. Ryan in a little bit of trouble. Two shots coming. Deshaun Yates, he's had to step into a major, major role. Really wasn't seeing a ton of time before Kafik Myers went down. Was that fourth or maybe even fifth guard, depending upon how you categorize Keon Long, whether it's a wing or a guard, but fourth or fifth guard before Kafik Myers went down. Well, now he's a starter and has done a great job for this Newman Garetti team. You cannot replace Kafik Myers. No. You do not replace a Gary Bertier. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> but you can perhaps fill in some of those gaps in the aggregate, and Deshaun Yates has been a big part of it. 28-22. A big run here for Newman Garetti. Darren Williams is fouled, just the third team foul against Newman Garetti here in the second quarter. Troy Brooks checking back in for the Saints, taking out Keon Long. This is a huge possession for the Raiders here, under a minute to go. And a bucket is a necessity. Almost backcourt. Murray taking on a larger ball handling role. Darren Williams, that one is one that's going to have to start falling because they are doubling and triple teaming Darren Williams when Thomas Sorber is on the bench. You know, they held him to eight the first, first time they met this year. Um, so they may have a little bit of a number on him, but. I think the number is two or three, yeah. meaning a double team or a triple team. Exactly. Tory Brooks. Open three for Amir Williams. That one's no good. And Ryan, that would have only been the fourth team foul against Newman Garetti. So Archbishop Ryan may not like the call, but it would not have been foul shots even if it was called in the dying moments. Let's thank a few sponsors. And let's start with Maggie's, Ted. We're going to start with Maggie's. Like I said before earlier tonight, I'm a customer at Maggie's, Maggie's Waterfront. Uh, Maggie'sWaterfront.com, right near Linden Avenue and Frankfurt in the great Northeast. Um, I got to give you this read real quick, Bob. Um, great food specials. They offer a Hero Monday where police, fire, military, nurses, and doctors, active and retired, receive 25% off their bill. So it's wonderful. And then I, I had talked before about uh, using them as a catering spot. They have a wonderful room called the Riverview Room on their second floor. It looks over the Delaware. Um, it's a great spot. Make sure you reach out and contact them if you have a graduation party, shower, uh, surprise party. Contact Maggie's. And so then once you do that on Wednesday and Thursday and you decide to pack up and go to the shore for the weekend. You're going to go to the shore and you're going to go stop at Keenan's Irish Pub who's celebrating their 25th anniversary where all neighborhoods, whether it's Northeast, South Philly, uh, have been meeting for 25 years. They're the biggest corner bar in North Wildwood, home of the high school reunion. Scott and Sean Keenan, proud Newman grads in, of 88 and 91. And again, stay tuned for the big Motown style Heck announcement yeah. tomorrow. And Bob is Googling the oh. Four Tops and the Temptations as we speak. Yes, that's right. You set me up for that one, no doubt about it. <laughs> and once I'm done doing my jig, then I'm going to go over to Petrosky Physio, the leader in sports physical therapy for high school, college, and professional athletes in Philadelphia, or folks like myself that you know pull a muscle when they're out on the dance floor. 
You can check them out at PetroskiPhysio.com or follow them on Instagram at Petrosky Physio. And maybe the reason that I struggle so much with my flexibility is because I've had a few too many primo hoagies, but can you blame me? <laughs> I cannot blame you. Fans, big games mean big parties. Don't settle for an average catering tray. Make it a primo. Order at one of the Primo Hoagies locations in-store or online at primohoagies.com. And it's really tough to do any type of segue here, but this is just one of the best nonprofit organizations you'll find, Blocks. At Blocks, they're going to help you turn your Pennsylvania state tax liability into need-based scholarships for your school, and you will receive a 90% tax credit refund. Learn more at blocks.org slash tax credit. 7.30 to go here in the half. We'll take a very quick break, and we will come back for the second half here on Bob Long Sports. That's the production unit here today, Bob Long Sports. Want to thank Sports Fan Base Network for putting it behind their paywall. And if anybody has not joined yet, tell them to go to sfbnppv.com to buy the subscription to both of these contests here tonight. And then return, by the way, for Monday's Catholic League Final. The girls game is set. Archbishop Carroll against Archbishop Wood. Rene Shields, Mike McDonald, two of the best coaches that the Catholic League has to offer. That'll be the early game. And then the winner of this game against Roman Catholic on Monday night here from the Palestra and live on the Penn Sports Network. And again, simulcast and streamed through the Sports Fan Base Network pay-per-view page. We'll leave you with the image of our title sponsor for the Bonanza here over the three days in six days of Catholic League basketball, semifinals and finals. That is our partners at Blocks.
Welcome back, everybody, to the Palestra. Second half about to get underway. Welcome inside the broadcast booth. Bob Long, Danny Rovey, Ted Westervelt, our gang here. And I said it in the first game, but these are two guys that have called more Philadelphia Catholic League basketball than anybody this year, and they deserve to be here alongside me. Thrilled to have you both. Ted, let's start with you. Archbishop Ryan, they came out, guns a-blazing. Three second quarter fouls, or three total fouls through midway through the second quarter. Derailed this Archbishop Ryan team. Darren Williams have been doubled and triple teamed. Who is that option going to be? I think that's the question in that huddle well, right actually, now. Actually, I don't think that that's been the problem. The problem has been um, going away from the game plan, getting the ball inside of Thomas Sorber. Everett hit some big threes. Matt Johnson hit a layup. It was you have to get Thomas back involved, and you got to keep better control of the basketball. You do that, you're going to still be in this basketball game. Danny, what stood out to you from Newman Garetti? Oh, I think the key is adaptability. Uh, Newman Garetti plays such an adaptable brand of basketball. Um, you know, we saw they were down 11 points right there uh, early in the first, uh, and they just did such a great job of coming back to the team, uh, really playing the Aragale style of basketball that we know and love and are so familiar with. Uh, finding more high-quality looks, and we're going to look to see a lot more of that here in the second half. And an early start. Thomas Sorber right back out on the floor, cuts down the deficit. I mean, despite the Newman praise, Ryan's done a great job hanging in this game when things didn't always go their way in the second quarter. <clears throat> Nearly a steal. A deep three. That one won't go. High for that rebound goes Stefan Ashley right to regain the possession. That's a big rebound. Good bucket there. Deshaun Yates. Now Matt Johnson, we talked about his story where he was a sixth or seventh man, went into the starting lineup halfway through the season. Archbishop Bryan, they have not lost since. Darren Williams, a deep one, and that is what gets this team going. A slow start for Darren Williams and a torrid second half. It's happened more than once this year, Ted. Yeah, he, he has a tendency to heat up like a microwave. He can go real three straight possessions with hitting threes. Let's see what they do here. And Ryan goes into the 1-3-1 zone. Can Newman shoot them out of it? Amir Williams got to a great spot and hit it. Amir Williams had a, a couple of tough shots in the first half right there, starting to find his footing back here in this one early. Sorber with a catch up top. Good back cut. Johnson, boy, he got to a great spot and then just kind of gave up on the drive. That's a Stephon. really acrobatic layup, though. Ashley Wright. Ryan dodged the bullet there. They sure did. Ooh. Soft call there. Oh. Goes against Lorenzo Jerkins. Joe Zaglinski can work an official though, Ted, and I am sure that he had something to say about Thomas Sorber picking up three personal fouls in the first half. I, I, Joe does have that talent. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a grab. That's an easy call. You know who else has that talent? Carl Aragel. Yeah, he's, been a few, <laughs> yep. he's been around a few blocks. Yep, yep. So we will see that cat and mouse game continue on as well. This just feels like a classic to me. Early call on oh. that, but Jaden Murray cuts it to three. I think we're going to the wire, gentlemen. Love nothing more than a last second ball game. Just seems right here. The second of two games, two intense semifinal games. The first one was great. A little bit more lopsided though towards the end. It'd be great to see a close photo finish. Yates, good pass. Extra one to the baseline. And Ashley Wright pulls it back to the logo. He's got Tory Brooks on the near side of the floor. What a stark contrast from the first quarter with this Saints team. Amir Williams, oh, wow. give him that shooter's roll. If he shot it once, he shot that corner three hundreds of times. Yeah, the Saints get the holy bounce, I guess, right there with a great <laughs> bucket. The holy trinity? Possibly. Our buddy Jeff Sherilla came uh, up with that one last week. I love it. <laughs> Shout out to him. Loose ball. Here's Jerkins. Two on one. Oh, lost the ball. He sure did. Everett comes up with it. Newman's got guys back. Everett. Murray. Good finish. And Joe Zaglinski is irate. He wants the plus one. 
I actually thought it was on ball. I thought I did too. And Murray just so strong to get it up and above the rim. Savvy move by Everett there. A little hesitation. Got Mary, gave the ball to Murray in a really, really good spot for him. Four point lead for Newman Garetti. Yates. Yates got all the way into the lane. That's a big time finish by the diminutive guard. Yeah, Yates right there, a hard nosed bucket. Great job of keeping the composure there, setting that pivot and going straight to the basket. By a good inch or two, the smallest guy on the floor went up <laughs> into the Sorber Forest. <laughs> well, they have him listed on the rush sheet as 5'9. Sorber, yes. Good post entry. Sorber does the work ahead of time. Four point deficit for Archbishop Ryan. They were in the Catholic League final two years ago against this very St. Uh, Newman Garetti team. Jerkins won't go. And that was probably the first bad decision that Newman Garetti have made. Oh! Sorber missed it, and that is basket interference, but we talked about this last year. Amir Williams had a very similar play. This could have and probably should have been called a technical yep. foul, Ted. Yes. Yep. That is a technical foul when you touch the ball and you're hanging on the rim, and that would have also counted as a Porsche personal foul. That would have been the fourth against Thomas Sorber, and yet another break goes the way of Thomas Sorber and Archbishop Ryan. The, the Raiders will take it, but I agree with you, Bob, on that, that, that call. Did you do a replay on that? Show I did. <laughs> I did. Very clear. And again, that was in the final minute. The same call was made in the Catholic League final last year. And I lauded it as a good call on the broadcast and was alerted after the fact, by the way, that that should have been a technical foul call. That's an offensive Ooh, wow. foul. They got a break there, too. That's a push. No, nah, that's a good call that's there. That's a good call. No doubt about it. Yeah, Keon Long right there, a little bit too physical going in. So it's interesting. It's 318 left, and your scores for Newman Garetti are Yates and Williams. How about that? Who had that lined up for tonight? Good steal, but Tory Brooks could not bring it in. Has he scored, Ted? Tory Brooks? Uh, not in this half, no. Yeah, Alex Shevchuk has him as scoring in the first half, our cameraman. I have him for four in the first half. Inside they go, but good job by Matt Gukas defensively on the high pass. Yeah, and like you said, Ted, he was all over him in that matchup previously earlier in the year. So we can look and see that a lot more. Maybe playing a similar role to Anthony Lilly and what yes. he did. Yep, exactly. Just kind of a scrappy player looking to see if he can hang around in the midst of, of a five-star Thomas Sorber. Tory Brooks, good look for Keon Long. Couldn't hit it. Really good job in there rebounding by Jaden Murray. Darren Williams, it's his time. Second half time, Darren Williams time. He's he hit two. Hot. Luna Garetti, three empty possessions in a row, Bob. It's been Darren Williams' MO all season long. Gets lightning hot late in games when it matters the most. Stephon Ashley Wright is fouled by Jaden Murray. That's a real good take by Ashley Wright. It is. I'd love to see him go up and finish that left-handed, <laughs> avoid the shot blocker, and not go with the double clutch. Up and under like that is so tough. And he's fortunate to get the foul call. It's the right call. Jaden Murray brought the hands down. But if Murray stays straight up, he's not finishing that. And you tally this, Ted. We've seen the missed free throws in the past. This is just one, and we still got an eternity to go. But Stefan Ashley Wright misses the first, and Newman Garetti fans think back to last year and how that Philadelphia Catholic League championship game ended. Missed them both. Six straight misses in the final minute of that Catholic League championship game against Roman Catholic. Sent the game to overtime on Xavier Brown three. And Newman Garetti was runner-up in the Catholic League. It was a game they thought they were going to win. Williams, are you kidding me? 
And that is Newman Garetti basketball. Williams is pinned back as that's about as far as you can go right there in the corner. <laughs> I mean, literally as far as you can go. <laughs> behind the basket, it seems. I mean, look at that. Still got a really nice look off, though, just around the rim and out. That's a heat check. Yep. 100%. That's like one of those old nothing but net commercials. Behind the backboard, up and over the top, nothing but net. <laughs> off the shot clock. Tory Brooks. He's one of those guys that needs to get going for Newman Garetti. Gukas is blocked. Thomas Sorber on the closeout. Yeah, Darren Gukas, Williams. Gukes may have took a second too long right there. Hello. Ooh. High off the window. The kiss. Points to the Northeast faithful on his way down the floor. Darren Williams will get another look as Newman Garetti walks it up the floor. Uh-huh. Letting the people know about it. <laughs> Back on the other end, a hand check is called against Matt Johnson. Daniel, what do you think about Tory Brooks? He, that was just a, a great little, he earned that foul. Yeah. He, he has a little bit of uh, old school, old soul about him. Yeah, absolutely. No, I, I think that uh, the, the future is bright uh, for Tory Brooks and the Saints. I mean, that's, that's a, a player they can really build that backward around with some great development under the Aragel system. I love the way he plays. He's a really hard-nosed player. I mean, he just is an athlete right there, missing on that floater, however. Murray brought it down. And a reset here for Archbishop Ryan. Thomas Sorber has played the entirety of this third quarter with the three personal fouls. And Archbishop Ryan with a one-point cushion will let this thing tick down. The five-second count is on. See if Joe calls a timeout with eight, eight seconds left. <laughs> Get it down to the tenth of the second that he did it against yeah, St. Joe's yeah. Prep. That was a tie game. Everett with 12. And there's and that got, timeout with 11.3 seconds. Been a, this has been a staple for Joe in the big games. To get this last possession, draw something up. Go up three, go up four, um, as opposed to a frantic look. At the end of the at the end of the quarter, and obviously what they did was they took how much time did he take off the clock here? Was it five? Was it was that 45, 50 seconds? Yeah, about? yeah, absolutely. That's about right. Yep. One last time for the evening, let's talk about Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. Let's Sponsors. talk about let's talk about Maggie's Waterfront Cafe. Oh yeah. If you have a shower, if you have a graduation, a surprise party, reach out to Maggie's Waterfront Cafe right off of Linden Avenue in Frankfurt in the Great Northeast. They have their, their Riverview room is awesome. The catering is absolutely delicious, and it's a great room and uh, just a, a really good spot. If you want some pub grub, head over there. They got a bunch of uh, beer soda options for, for everybody, over 40 beers on tap, and they take care of their first responders um, and nurses, and it's just a great spot in the Northeast. Thank you to Maggie's for sponsoring these broadcasts. Support the folks that are supporting high school athletes. Simple as that. Darren Williams off one foot. Thomas Sorber got the rebound. It won't go. Right at the horn, it would have counted. Another luck. Williams had a little bit more time than he thought. Kind of back leg yeah, that one. Oh, the one legger. I mean, incredible effort from Sorber right there to just kind of scrap and put that one back up. But and a really point. good job, Danny, to do it without fouling. I, I don't yep. think he goes over the back here. He goes straight up, doesn't make contact. That's a clean play from Thomas Sorber. And it's really only a play that he can make with that size and skill. He, my, his athletic ability really impressed me this year and how, and how he kind of grew into his body. Uh, but more importantly, guys, eight minutes. It's a one-point game. It's such a big eight minutes for Archbishop Ryan as well as these young players who are playing phenomenal. No for doubt about Newman, it. For Newman Garetti, but uh, he called it, Bob. Might get down to the last possession. Might yep. just come down to the last possession, and the three teams left are arguably the three best defensive teams in the league. We talked about Roman Catholic, and I think that's the Chris McNesby system. The players change. The defensive intensity remains the same. For Archbishop Ryan, it certainly Joe Zaglinski is a big part of that. Thomas Sorber. 
what he's been able to do inside. A bunch of blocks even here tonight. Three for Thomas Sorber per our unofficial tallier, Ted Westervelt. And some really good on-ball defenders, Ted, that can be a little bit more aggressive because of Sorber as the safety valve behind Absolutely. him. Absolutely. He is a true rim protector um, for Archbishop Ryan. And they've had them throughout the years, but no one like Thomas. He's actually, you know, we, we, what we didn't mention is he's the all-time leading scorer at Archbishop Ryan. That's right. He did that over his uh, Joe Zaglinski. Current coach. Current coach. Um, obviously in the 1,000-point club along with Darren Williams, 2,000-point scorers on the floor for the Raiders. We talked with Joe Zaglinski about that in our Philadelphia Catholic League playoff preview show. And Joe was really happy that Thomas Sorber was the guy to do it. And frankly, that he got it out of the way before all this postseason play. Exactly, exactly. Newman Garetti trails by one. Jerkins has been awesome tonight. Thomas Sorber comes back from behind and got the block. A left-handed finish, and Sorber's got no shot to block it. He did all the work ahead of time, great pivot inside, and then tried to go up with the right hand, and that was the difference. Oh, wow, a great hustle play right there. Number Everett. five, yeah, Ryan Everett. Did a great job coming up to get that inbound play, but out on Ryan. Not a seat to be had. Sold out for days leading up to this one. Deshaun Yates. Yates puts up a good one oh. in the lane. Beautiful. Fading away to avoid the shot blocker, Thomas Sorber, who was taken out of the play. And Bob, just to piggyback on what you said, I mean, it's just so impressed what I've seen from Deshaun Yates this year. I mean, to fill, fill the shoes of Kafik Myers is, is really no, no simple task. He's done such a great job. Darren Williams drives to the hole, and that is Newman Garetti basketball. It's an incredible play by Lorenzo Jerkins. Clean on the strip. Clean strip and a chance for Newman Garetti to go up four with a three. Jerkins attacks the body of Thomas Sorber, who is there for the block. Ryan basketball. Attack the rim with Sorber defending at your own risk. He's oh, straight, up, straight up and down, yeah? Textbook defense, no yeah. Doubt about straight it. up and down, jump with the player, timed it perfectly, had the arms extended. That was brilliant. What do you think, Ted Westervelt? Another game in the 40s for Newman for uh, for Archbishop Ryan? I, I think that's what they want because that means they will have control tempo and possession. Newman Garetti scored 89 in a quarterfinal win against Archbishop Carroll. Needless to say, a different type of ball game than Archbishop Ryan played against St. Joe's Prep. That one's not even close, and a good check out there by Jerkins. I mean, not to mention Newman Garetti also playing much tighter defense. They also let that Carroll team score 83 points on them. So to hold this, this Ryan offense to, to, to 38 has been incredible, you know, as well. Six minutes and 25 seconds to play. There's cool. a nervous energy in this, in this building. <laughs> Torrey Brooks has the one-on-one -on -one matchup, and now he's going to take a ball screen. Brooks puts it up with the right. Thomas Sorber brings it down. It was a patient play from Torrey Brooks. He actually waited and was patient for Sorber to get out of the way. And had a shot to put it up, but short-armed it with the right hand. Everett for three. It's a big one. His second of the night. Beg your pardon, third of the night for Ryan Everett. He hit two in the first half. Stefan Ashley right. He's open again. Sorber was there for the block, and that's why Ashley Wright tried to dish it at the last possible moment. Stefan Ashley Wright fades away. It was halfway down. The Palestra gods yanked that one <laughs> up from yeah, the yes, nylon. Yes, they, they did. There's something about the rims, guys, I'm telling you. <laughs> they tighten them up. Darren Williams, open three for Murray. That's not even close, but it was tipped by Sorber. Good pass. Yeah, you're giving him an assist. You're the tallier. <laughs> yeah. What do you say? Timeout on the floor. One more look. 
It's not going to draw any iron. That is an intended tip from Thomas Sorber to Darren Williams. And Archbishop Ryan has its largest second half lead. And Williams is having an incredible second half. Archbishop Ryan now propelled to a four point lead. Just over five minutes remaining, guys. What a big stage in the game. Play the trumpets. Play <laughs> the trumpets. Ted, are the trumpets going to be on hand at the Motown at Keenan's? <laughs> There's always a horn section, Bob. Right. There's always a good horn section. Tell us about our friends at Keenan's, the second part of the duo of restaurants that are the reasons why these broadcasts are being provided to you here tonight. Well, the, the, the Keenan brothers are Newman grads, and it's the biggest corner bar in, in North Wildwood. Um, big announcement tomorrow for Motown. But if you if, listen, if you don't, they have live music and all kinds of stuff. It's a great place to go. Um, you'll see kid, people from all neighborhoods, including your own. Uh, so if, when you're in North Wildwood and Wildwood and you don't go to Keenan's, you really didn't go to Wildwood. They gotta put that on like a shirt or something. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's kinda, like, that's I know a, a guy. That's a merch opportunity right I know there, a guy. I'm telling you. Newman Garetti in the lane. Kick out for Amir Williams. And that shot was disrupted wow. by the length of the closeout there yes. by Jaden Murray. Johnson. And Archbishop Bryan is so good at slowing things down, getting into the half court. Game is being played to their pace. Neither team with any fouls. Just about halfway through this quarter. Good hands oh, by yeah. Amir Williams. They got a break there. Yep. That was an ill-advised entry pass for sure. You know, he's actually in decent position, but Amir Williams, after that ball was released, did a nice job tracking back. And that could have been a travel, wasn't called. The extra step. 4.08 to play. Darren Williams, it's been his time. Johnson, the lane opens up. And that's ball movement, dribble penetration, a paint touch. And that's, and the a, extra pass. that's a big bucket for the sophomore. And that was a 45, 50 second possession for Ryan there. Every possession has to count here for Newman Garetti. And Thomas Sorber has picked up his fourth personal foul. One more look. Jerkins attacks the outside hip, Danny. Oh yeah, definitely the right call to make right there. We can see that outside hit get extended, that leg is fully extended. The right call on the floor, but just continuing to change things here. And oh. Stephon Ashley Wright couldn't pick it up. Oh, he is fouled. That's a good foul, good foul. Archbishop Ryan can't believe it. It would have been a breakaway dunk for Darren Williams. And that student section would have erupted with a breakaway dunk. I mean, at this notion in the game, up six points. We're looking at that dunk possibly being a dagger, but right now, it's anyone's game here. Archbishop Ryan, though, the boa constrictor, can they squeeze the life out of this game? Up. Sorber, good kick. Williams barely drew the iron. And Sorber has to back off with the four personal fouls on the offensive glass. Really good look for Yates. Couldn't hit it. That's a big miss. It's oh. given away. Newman Garetti gets an easy one. Murray. That is huge. On a giveaway. What a job from Deshaun Yates just to hang around in the mix right there. Recognizes the tendency. Well, passing back. I'll take that. Thank you very much. Off to the races. Danny, I think you nailed it with that word, tendency. That's film study there. Yep. Recognizing that maybe Murray is not the most comfortable with the ball in his hands. And now we take a look inside that Newman Garetti huddle. Guys, what are they talking about? Now we'll take a look inside the Archbishop Ryan huddle at full speed. What are, what are they talking about in there, guys? Uh, well, I think for Ryan, at least, just cleaning up some mistakes right there. That last bucket, they cannot give that up again for the remainder of the game. It's only a four-point basketball game, and 
you know, really it's for anyone's taking. So I think it's, it's really important that Ryan sticks to what they know and plays their game. At least Newman, they have to keep on playing scrappy. Remember how they came back from that 11-point deficit early in this one? They had to play with that same mentality and just kind of chip away at what the Raiders have. Bob, Ted, Danny up here high above in the palestra. What a great vantage point. Alex Shevchuk, our guy on the camera, doing an excellent job bringing it to you. We're nothing without Alex. Absolutely. Otherwise, we're a radio broadcast. We're a radio broadcast, right? <laughs> we appreciate him and appreciate everybody watching here tonight. This is the pinnacle of high school basketball in Philadelphia, and it's the pinnacle of high school basketball in the state of Pennsylvania. And I know there's a state title to come later in March. But I did not stutter. No, he did not. Archbishop Ryan leading by four. Cut down to four after that last giveaway. Darren Williams, good look on the baseline, what big block. block. Right back to him and he's fouled. Jaden Murray on the second attempt. What a block. Lorenzo Jerkins. Beautiful on the first. I've been so impressed with Jerkins right there, tracking back and bang, the block. He's done such an amazing job in this game, the big number 21. You said it, Westchester's getting a good one. Oh, absolutely. That's a diamond in the rough right there for the Golden Rams. Jaden Murray missed the first. A 72% foul shooter on the year. Not a particularly high volume, just 32 shots taken. Jaden Murray missed them both. This game is wide open in the final two and a half minutes. Darren Williams picks up the personal foul, just the second team foul against the Raiders of Archbishop Ryan here in the fourth quarter. And I like that, I like that Ashley Wright decision to go to the hoop. He, he, his speed is tough to handle. Oh my. Lorenzo Jerkins wants to go one on one again. Somehow didn't travel. <laughs> Archbishop Ryan disagrees. Tory Brooks with a step back. A teardrop that didn't draw much iron. Yeah, not really the shot right there from Tory Brooks that the Saints are looking for. And foul called against Brooks. Third team foul against Newman Garetti. To your point, Danny, with how Archbishop Ryan wants to play the late stages of these games, there's just not that many offensive possessions remaining. Yeah, not at all. Uh, urgency is, is the name of the game right now. It's really important to maximize these possessions, make sure that you're aware of the clock, uh, and, and just fire off some high-quality looks, you know, better than just kind of shooting off weight like Brooks did in the last possession. The five-second count is on. It's up to four. And Williams broke the outside hip. 100 seconds to go. Poked away from Sorber. And Archbishop Bryan has no problems with that, Ted. They have a chance no. to totally reset, basically start a new possession since there's no shot clock. And again, managing this game, Archbishop Bryan, something that they learned to do throughout the year. It's a four-point lead, and Archbishop Bryan, I don't think, has any plans on releasing this basketball unless they have an open look at the rim. And a foul is called, giving it one minute and 19 seconds to play. Did they give that to Brooks? Keon Long Keon picked Long. up the oh, personal. Right. Stay with us post game as we will do our best to manage the scrum and get down there for a post game <laughs> interview with several members of the winning team. We have a timeout on the floor. And the head coaches. Time out on the floor with a minute so, yeah. 19 to play. Scoreboard reads Archbishop Ryan with three timeouts remaining. Newman Garetti with just two. Same situation that Ryan was, it was a tie ball game against St. Joe Prep in their quarterfinal. And the Raiders took a minute 10 seconds off the clock. Uh, with a timeout with, with eight seconds left and Darren Williams won with the jumper. What do you do here? 
I don't think you released the basketball. I don't think so. I don't think so either. Absolutely. Double bonus Ball the rest security. of the way. Ball right? security, guys. No more front ends of the one and one here at this level of high school based upon the recent rule change. Lean into that. Oh, Gukas, that would have been a good foul to give. Matt Johnson has not taken many foul shots, and now they do elect to send Johnson to the line for two. You send the sophomore. I don't think he has that yet. Three of four on the year. This is the Palestra, 9,500 fans. It's a little different than Egan at home. <laughs> wow. Johnson, it looks good. Would not fall. That's four, make that three straight misses for Archbishop Ryan at the line. Lucas comes out. And Guys, he missed them both. The tight rims of the pleasure will give you no forgiveness. It's oh. blocked. Thomas Sorber reaches for the rafters. I mean, he came in like with a windmill with that block right there. You can see that arm just he's soar like, above. He's like a human eclipse. <laughs> That's oh a my sixth block. goodness! And his most impressive tracks the ball so well on its ascent, hitting it right at the summit. Dangerous pass captured by Brooks. Brooks barely caught it. It's well short. Loose ball. Who's on it first? Last touch by Archbishop Ryan. Oh, you can just tell on that shot from Brooks right there, he did not have his legs and full body into no. it. It's almost like he totally released it, upper body, and we can tell off the front end of the rim, just barely grazed iron. Good call there on the floor amidst the melee. First time in the run of play, we've seen the mop come out here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the condensation of the palestra. Of course, that body's on the floor. Caused that to be the case. Now, you don't need it to three here if you are Newman Garetti. Got to get a good look. Jerkins from the elbow. No good. Darren Williams pulls it down. And they'll send the senior a high-volume free throw shooter to the line for two. And that was a good look for Newman Garetti. You couldn't ask for an elbow jumper, an open elbow jumper. Darren Williams. 68% from the foul line this year. It will still be a two possession game. If Even he if he both. makes two. Yep. Wow. Five straight misses. Five misses in a row from the line for Archbishop Ryan. The rims. And are we seeing a reversal, of course, from last year where Newman Garetti was the team that had the lead and couldn't knock him down. You can only dodge so many bullets. One of two for Darren Williams. Oh, wow, good cross. Foul is called. Still two fouls to give after that one, or beg your pardon, now one to give for Archbishop Ryan. I get the ball in Ashley Wright's hands. Yep. And say, go have at it. Yeah, give it into your most applauded scorer here. Williams lost Ashley Wright. They took on a foul. One more to give now. That was that was the one to give. Next one will send Newman Garetti to the line. And that is really the ticket. We talked about in the first game how clock does not stop after made baskets. Well, it sure does if you foul them. And the opposition goes to the line. Tory Brooks might have been blocked. Might have been blocked by Everett. Archbishop Bryan. Oh, man. A foul is called against Amir Williams, and that is not what you want to see. No, here. That's the same shoulder that he had a stinger on earlier in the year, and he has been dinged up for a good portion of the year. You know, Tory Brooks, I know he wants to be aggressive there, and I like the fact that he wants to he wants to be the guy, but you have he doesn't look like he's set. He's shooting too, way too early. Yep. Um, Agreed. And he's helping Archbishop Ryan out. And a chance for Archbishop Ryan to go up to three possessions. I wouldn't say goodbye just yet as the Ryan faithful. This ball game is not over This is just still yet. a ball game. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. 
to your point on Brooks, this is a guy who, who is a really good passer, and the Newman coaches have told us about that, but this was a moment where he decided he wanna, wanted to go win the game himself or pull themselves back in it. He had the game winner against Archbishop Ryan in the regular season, but this game played more to Archbishop Ryan's pace. One more foul shot will make this a three-possession game. And I think it's going to be a race for me to get down there. <laughs> oh, man. And grab Sorber and Williams. And the co-MVP on the line here. Nope. One of two. It remains a two-possession game. Newman Garetti needs a three. Ashley Wright lets it go. No good. He finished, and a timeout. Second to last timeout taken by Carl Aragale. It comes with 17 seconds left in the game. And so now the math equation comes back into the equation that we talked at the end of the last game, Ted. You need to score twice, a two possession game in 17 seconds, and you can only stop the clock one more time with the clock not stopping after made baskets under a minute to play. Well, I, Ryan's been in this position before, especially the game against Wood. It's not good memories for Archbishop Ryan. He kind of gave that game away. So one of the biggest challenges for them during the year is, is this actual play, inbounding the ball and getting over the timeline. Um, if they can execute that right here, they're going to the final Monday night. Absolutely right. Get the ball inbounds, and Saint, uh, you, you think about what happened against St. Joe's. Archbishop Bryan nailed their game end situation. They're going to need to do that again here. Archbishop Bryan has three timeouts, Danny, with which to work. Yep. I think Joe Zaglinski will use them liberally if there's even a shred of doubt about being able to get the ball in safely. Biggest, biggest timeout of the season, biggest huddle of the season for, for both teams. It's where it all comes down to. These young players for Newman Garetti. Can they pull it off? And the seniors from Archbishop Ryan want to play Monday night. The winner will meet Roman Catholic. Sorber is fouled. One second comes off the clock. Bonus the rest of the way for Archbishop Ryan. Again, he makes both. It's still. It's still a two-possession game, but... But with not much time left. Nope. Let's see what Sober can do here. The co-MVP on the line. Under 17 seconds remain. Wow. Missed the first. Sorber comes into the game 77% from the line. He's made one of his last three. Guys, only four points separate these schools. Sorber hits the second. Here we go. Newman Garetti has to go quick. They're going for a quick two. No good. Jerkins thought he was hit. No call. Sorber brings it down. They can dribble this one out. This senior class has waited a long time, and they'll finally get their shot in the Philadelphia Catholic League Championship game on Monday night. Just a great performance by Archbishop Ryan. 48-43 final, kept it under 50. Danny, I'll tell you, they closed the game, managed to close the game out in spite of it getting a little scroll at the end and credit to Newman Garetti, but Archbishop wow. Ryan advances to the final. Archbishop Ryan's game management is just so commendable. I mean, with how they managed the end of that prep game and this game right here, I mean, this is such a special group. And we are set for an unforgettable final on Monday night between the Raiders and Kaolites. Unforgettable final is right while Joe heads down to try to get some, get some interviews. Thomas Sorber with six blocks tonight. If you didn't, Renzo Jerkins played a hell of a game tonight. Westchester's going to be real happy, but you got a chance to see an elite player in this elite league in Thomas Sorber and Darren Williams. 
and you can see them going into their student section and celebrating Coach Joe Zaglinski getting back to the final. And just such an amazing milestone for the Raiders. Sending it on to Bob Long, talking with Looks like Bob's got Joe and, and Thomas. Thomas Sorber, Joe Zaglinski with us. An emotion-filled win here tonight. A chance for your senior class that's been waiting for three years to do this, to get another shot in the final. You're going to get that shot on Monday night. How does that feel? Feels amazing. But we just got to get back in the gym and get back to work, honestly, and get ready for Orman. We had you at six blocks at one point. You may have even added another one late in the contest. That has to feel good. They attacked you, and you responded defensively. You know, they was just trying to get in my head on the offensive end. You know, I was giving up stops, getting fouls. I had four fouls in, like, the beginning of the fourth quarter. But my coaches told me to keep my composure, no more fouls, and then we'll win this game. How did you manage that? Because that is a challenge, playing with the four personals, staying in the game, playing the entire second half the way you did, and being that catalyst to take a halftime deficit and turn it into a semifinal win. You know, my teammates just told me to just keep playing defense and just keep my hands up and not to foul at all. So I just listened to whatever my teammates say, listen to what my coaches say, and I helped them get the dub. So, Co-MVP sounds pretty good. How about a berth to the Catholic League final on Monday? Sounds amazing, but it doesn't sound amazing until I get that PCL chip. Thanks for doing this, Thomas. We'll see you Monday. Thank you. Joe, thanks for hanging in. I guess hang out to watch that guy and listen to him talk. You can do that. The leading in program history, the coach, now the catalog. Yeah, he's special, man. I love his composure down in the fourth quarter. They didn't let him, those guys get in his head. And uh, we just grinded out one, man. Defensively, it was amazing. You know, get guys in front. We contested everything. We made everything tough for them in the second half. And D. Will stepped up, man. We were trying to bring Thomas out a little bit to get more paint touches. And, you know, you know, it's all about these guys. They all stepped up in the second half. They wanted this really bad, and, you know, it showed. This now senior class was sophomores when they went to the final two years ago. Last year, you came up one step short. How much does it mean to this particular group to grow? and get to the final. Yeah, that's what we talked about from day one, man. You know, we had some bumps in the road, but this was the final destination we wanted to be at. And, um, you know, they've been together and connected, you know, for three years now. And I think that showed down the fourth quarter with our poise and our composure. You know, and this is for all the alumni. You know, we're trying to get one for everybody. Joe, congratulations. Thanks for doing this. Yep. And we'll see you here on Monday. Sound good? Yep, thanks, Bob. Appreciate it. Joe Zielinski with us here on the floor. Ted, Danny, back to you guys. Danny, you know, a couple of impressive things. Number one, Thomas Sorber talking about getting in the gym, getting back to work right away. So um, that's the mindset that they're in. Um, but defensively, they did. They locked down. They made it very, very difficult. Um, Lorenzo Jerkins aside, mm -hmm. um, and they kept them under 50 points, and that's and that's what they were. And that's how they win that game. Newman is a team that averages 76 points a game. Like you said, Ted, I mean, the defense was unbelievable. Uh, such an amazing game to watch. Um, Ryan, you know, all year long, they have been the most resilient team in the league. They battled adversity. And right here, they did it in this game. They withstood that hot stretch there from the Saints. Uh, took over on defense uh, and then you know by the help of, of Darren Williams uh, Jaden Murray Thomas Sorber I mean these guys are so skilled and it's going to be one heck of a final two big men yep so uh, Bob Long talks and you guys talk about guard 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 you guys love guards <laughs> and then it looks like at the end of this year for this season it's going to this season is going to revolve around the play of two big men yes Sharif it Jackson is Jackson and Thomas yeah, Sorber Jackson on Sorber um, and uh, with with Darren Williams as a as a one B, yeah, right as yeah, a as no, a I mean, as a best supporting actor, or you know he could be a lead actor as well. So Monday night's final is going to be uh, so much fun with uh, Goss as a guard. How does that Matt, How does Ryan handle that? Yeah. Um, and then how does how does Roman handle Thomas Storber? Are they going to just go? You know, it, it's going to be so interesting. And one thing I did want to get to, Danny, real quick was yep. What, Coach Zaglinski, this team has – I had a chance to see this team up close. And yeah. Obviously, we yeah. talked about it. Yep. Um, the management from end of ending games and ending quarters has been an evolution. Mm -hmm. 
it hasn't been something that's been all year. And when you talk about a good coach, a solid coach, a great coach, you, you saw one dial one up tonight um, and against, against arguably the very best to do it. Bill Fox, Speedy Morris, where's Carl Aragel going to end up? He's still going. No doubt. Um, Joe Zaglinski beat him in a big game tonight, and I think it's the first time that he's ever beaten uh, Coach Aragel as well. Interesting. Good yeah. time to do it. Good, yeah, not absolutely. a bad time to do it. Punch the ticket to the championship. What a venue this is, and want to thank uh, our sponsors one more time here tonight. First of all, Blocks. Blocks is the presenting sponsor of the entire set of festivities over three nights. Use your PA tax dollars. Give it back to schools. Use Blocks to do it. Go to blocks.org. Want to thank Petrosky Physio. Visit them online as well for all your physical therapy needs. Primo Hoagies, self-explanatory. Get yourself a catering tray. It's the best around. Best place to go when you're hosting a party. And then our two sponsors that were specific to bringing us here, the Philadelphia Catholic League semifinal game broadcast. Keenan's, where all neighborhoods still meet in North Wildwood, New Jersey. And then if you're not going down the shore, you're going to stay at Maggie's. Maggie's Waterfront Cafe, head on down to Maggie's next time you are looking to go have a nice meal or a drink with family or friends. What a contest. What a night. It sure feels like one of those nights that you will remember for many, many years. The night that Archbishop Ryan punched their ticket for the Catholic League final. The night that Father Judge got to the final for the first time in 25 years. But it was Roman's night. Chris McNesby turned the screws when needed and relied upon the front court of Sharif Jackson. Sets up our matchup for Monday night. Ted, one thought on a Monday night final between Archbishop Ryan and Roman Catholic. McNesby v. Zaglinski and Jackson v. Sorber. Danny, I think he took the good answers. but <laughs> <laughs> Wow. I mean, uh, just it's going to be a complete spectacle, a battle of the bigs, but also a battle of the backcourt, right? I mean, you have amazing scorers on, on this, this Ryan team. Darren Williams, I was so impressed with what he did on all fronts today for the Raiders and then paired with the excellent backcourt of Roman Catholic with Cave Goss. It is going to be a matchup for the ages. And we will be here for it. So where you're watching the game right now, if you watched it live behind the pay-per-view, Sports Fan Base Network, SFBN. Go right back there. Bob Long Sports will take a seat from a production standpoint. We're so glad we were able to do the production here tonight. And we will turn it over to the good folks at the Penn Sports Network who do an excellent job. They produce the same broadcasts that go on ESPN Plus for the Penn men's and women's basketball teams. So we will have multiple cameras, multiple producers, lots of great functions and forms. And I will be thrilled to be on the play-by-play -play for both the boys and girls game. Archbishop Wood, Archbishop Carroll on the girls' side will be a classic. And the boys' side, Archbishop Ryan, Roman Catholic, that matchup was determined tonight. If you somehow have not gotten your tickets already, I don't think there are many I left. Think there are many left. I, yeah, I would do it now. Yep. I would do it before 9,500 people get in their cars yep. and go home yep. and decide, my gosh, that was too much fun. I'm coming back on Monday because <laughs> I promise you, there's only, I don't know, there's, I, I don't know how many tickets there are left. I'm not going to make that statement, but I can tell you it's not that many. Not many. Danny Rovi, Ted Westervelt, that's Alex Shevchuk. There he is, camera guy. He doesn't get much air time, but he should <laughs> because he did an excellent job. Thanks for hopping in the shot. For all of us here at Bob Long Sports, my name is Bob Long saying so long. Thanks to Sean Riley in the studio for SFBN, who has kept us on the rails behind that SFBN pay-per-view wall. Want to thank the interviewees as well. Carl Aragale, Joe Zaglinski gave us some time. Thomas Sorber. And after the first game, Chris McNesby and Sharif Jackson gave us time as well. They bring a lot to the telecast. They are the reasons that we are here, and to be giving of their time on a night like this is special. Thanks to everyone here at the Philadelphia Catholic League, all of our sponsors, my staff, you fans, for letting us into your living room here tonight. We'll bid you adieu from the Cathedral of College Basketball, and we'll await what will be an incredible night on Monday. Take care, everyone.